it. I'll just read a little bit um, about Dr. Stella. Um, so, Dr. Stella Nemoseso, the CEO and founder of Dynamic Therapy and Wellness, Dynamic Lifestyle Institute, is a retired university professor, a renowned doctor of physical therapy, a master trainer select, a lifestyle medicine doctor, and an international best-selling author. She has empowered countless individuals to achieve optimal health, embrace vibrant lifestyles, to achieve personal and business success. Her leading authority in education, physical therapy, lifestyle medicine, content creation, and pain management has transformed many lives globally. So that's a little bit on um, Dr. Stella. So I will pray. And then after I pray, um, Dr. Stella can start her presentation. So we are praying. Heavenly Lord, we come before you this night, this morning, this afternoon. We thank you for the opportunity you have given us to, to call upon your name and to, to learn of you, Heavenly Lord. I thank you, Father, for Dr. Stella. I pray that she may be able to uh, present this lesson and we may be able to understand it. I pray that we may be receptive to everything that she will present to us, Heavenly Lord. And I pray that we may grow through this. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for, for your love and for always taking care of us and for always guiding us. And thank you for psych therapy. I pray that you may continue to be the lead, to uh, protect the leadership and continue to be with them and help them always give us good lessons. Thank you, Lord, for who you are and thank you for answering us prayer. I pray in Jesus' name with hearts of thanksgiving. Amen. Amen, amen. I'm so excited to be here today. How many people here are excited like I am? Please show by raising your hand or typing amen or great. I'm so excited. And you know how life goes, right? I live in the state of Florida. And for those of you know, we get storms a lot. So one of those days when I had a perfect PowerPoint and I'm excited about sharing my PowerPoint, we just lost um, power here. So I'm operating from a different device, but I'm so excited because the place to be is here. Um, I want you just to take a moment and breathe and embrace where you are and let yourself know this. You are in the right place at the right time. How many people here feel stuck? You feel stuck. Perfect, you are at the right place. I am going to tell you a little bit about why we are having this conversation today. But before I do that, I'm going to ask those of you who have been journeying with us, who've been showing up here, uh, who have mastered a couple of things and applied them to share their experiences. This is the place where you don't have to be perfect. You just have to show up. And Johan, I thank you for that nice introduction. You're the best. One thing I know is that every single one of you joining here today, you are excited and get ready to make it to the next level. And this is the place. So let's take a moment. Let's hear those who have shared experiences who want to share, because I know some of you have been frequent in this place. Um, and I understand I just got, yes, thank you, Veronica. This is such a relevant topic. It wasn't my topic. Two weeks ago, I was in this space where we were sharing about anxiety. We were all ready to zip anxiety out of our lives. And at the end of the session, I asked a question, what topics would you guys like to hear? And I think Annette said something about, you know, how to get unstuck or something. And Vanessa, um, Vanessa said, how does one get unstuck? So I said, well, perfect. I have two more weeks to have conversations this month. 
let's take it to the next level. Let's meet the needs of the people. So the real, the topic I came up with today is the leap of faith, embracing change and getting unstuck. I just put those words together, but the demand is based on the people. So if you are here for the first time today, I just want to let you know that these sessions are coordinated by a team of people, psych therapy. Psych therapy is comprised of volunteers which are internationally located. You've heard from Joanne, she's one of them. We've got Veronica here today, we've got Annette, and I'm not sure some of the uh, members are not here today. And I'm going to take this opportunity before I hand over to those who want to testify while we are waiting for those who want to arrive. One day, life was just happening to me. Everything was going on well. I got a call that my mother was very sick. It was in September. And she was on seven liters of oxygen suddenly and things were happening. And from a distance based in the US, I was trying to understand what's going on with mom? What do I need to do? What's going on? At the same time, coincidentally, someone was going through their own experience. And another person gave them my number and said, hey, contact Dr. Stella. She'll be able to pray with you and advise you. So that particular individual sent me and a text, hello, I was sent to you by sister so-and-so, so you can pray for me. And I saw the text, I said, thank you for reaching out, I'll be right with you. The person tried to call me while I was on other calls. You know how when you have a parent who's sick, everybody's trying to understand or to ask or have questions. So I kept texting the person that I'll be right with them. Two days went by and I never got a chance. The young man then sent me an audio, and I'm sharing with, with you this because this is real. When we get stuck, we look for ways to get unstuck. He sent me the audio. The audio was very lengthy, but he was telling me that, he was telling me that I'm not good enough. He said, you know, I've been trying to get hold of you. I really needed help. And you did not answer me. Is that how you Christians treat people? People who are going through a lot, who are going through a crisis, people who are really overwhelmed? I listened and I texted him. I said, listen, thank you. Today, I happen to have an opportunity. I will talk to you. The young man was humble. He came to the phone and he said, you know, I was very disappointed in you because I heard so much good things about you. So I said, yeah, it so happened that my mom was critically sick and she's on seven liters of oxygen. She's still here, but entertaining the calls and trying to troubleshoot what's going on with her. She relocated back to Africa was kind of challenging. The young man said, I'm sorry, I didn't know. And he went on to say, I'm sorry for giving you an earful, but I said, I'm so glad you gave me an earful. I said, I'm the right person to have heard that. You have made me realize that there's a need. So it was my conversation with this young man who one day will share this story, if he hasn't shared yet. When I said, listen, if you're going through this, there could be other people who are going through the same thing. Why don't you put people together? so that we can have this conversation jointly. So from that moment, psych therapy was born by all the leaders who came together and say, we're gonna to come together. So we meet every Sunday. I'm not always the moderator, the presenter, but there's always a presenter in this room at the same time, because this group of volunteers who call themselves psych therapy administrators, they are all volunteers. I'm part of it when I'm present. They have realized that there's a need. And friends of mine, I take this moment to share with you. As a human, as a person who's lived in my body for 54 years, I've seen, I've heard. And I've seen and understood that the COVID brought more problems. And I'm gonna be honest with you and sincere. When the COVID hit, it made people revisit their past traumas in many ways. There's a lot of research which is supporting this, that when trauma hit from COVID, some people began reliving their past traumas again. So I'm thankful for psych therapy and the work they do. They are all volunteer. As um, 
is a CEO of my company, Dynamic Therapy and Wellness Services, Dynamic Lifestyle Institute. I've opened my, my space, which is the Zoom space, and I've made myself available because together we are going to make a difference. We have more mental health cases than we can afford to take care of in the whole world. We don't have enough mental health practitioners out there. So that tells me something, that if I can come up with a way to help another, I will. So all of you here, just remember this, it's not by accident that you're here. So I also want to take this opportunity to introduce part of my team. I do have a global team who work behind the scenes in this room today. There's Mr. Mofu, who's situated in Zambia in the country of, Kit in the city of Kitwe in Zambia, which is in Africa, Southern Africa. I appreciate him joining today. He is a set of twins and he just got a baby. So he's not always gonna be here. So you might see him sharing some links today. He's present. So friends of mine, type in the chat box where you're coming from and why you're here. Because it matters to me. At the end of the day, if you've come to a place like this and you did not get what you came here for, then my team and I and our group of volunteers have failed. It is my hope that today, before you leave this place, you will see I've seen some light and I'm on my way to getting unstuck. So at this moment, I know there's a hand, Ms. V. Hattie will give you an opportunity to speak. Thank you for being here. Go ahead, Vives. You have your hand up so you can go ahead and speak. Hey, it looks like. Pleasant, pleasant, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Venice. I shortened by calling myself V or Venny, and I am living in Jamaica. I just want to say I'm here today for wellness, interaction, and camaraderie. And I would like to let you know that two weeks ago, when I came, I was, I am pleasantly surprised. I was not expecting to get the level of expertise and frankness that I got from Dr. Stella. She would have presented the wheel. She would have, though I joined late, she would have presented the, the, the test that we should go through. At that time, I would have ticked all the boxes that I'm okay and I'm well. But after dealing with something, I realized that I asked her, I am feeling stuck. And what do I need to do to, be, to, to get unstuck, to move from where I'm at? And she really explained. And not only that, I would have encountered something that really baffles me. I could not find my way my friend dr coleman is presently on the line and i just want to thank her for being there and i spoke with dr stella i called her i asked her if i could become her friend and she said yes uh she has allowed me to move from the hole that i was in to a light in my soul and i just want to say thank her publicly Thank you, Miss V. Thank you for coming forward and sharing. Is there anyone here who wants to share or who has a question before we move on? Because we are moving on timely. Thank you for your patience. Anyone? Thank you. So um, I've not always been this comfortable in my skin sharing stories, helping others, not at all. I began a journey uh, growing up in Africa. Some of you have heard my story. Growing up in Africa, I was mm -hmm. an unwanted child. 
My father didn't want me. Oh, we have hands, so we're gonna back off a little bit. Empress and Yolanda, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, uh, uh, good afternoon, good evening, wh wherever you are. Uh, my name is Rachel, I'm from the UK. And I came to, to be aware of these counseling groups. A long time I used to think that psychology doesn't really work. I thought people are just playing with people's minds just to get money or wherever. I never used And then when I came across different groups, including this one, which came up later, I realized we need to take care of our emotional health. We always talking about our physical health. That's where we put more emphasis and then sometimes spiritual health, but we forget our mental health. And because of that, that is why we end up having some problems uh, where we didn't expect to go to like when COVID came, it came suddenly and I'm sure almost everybody's mental health was challenged. And because some people didn't know how to get help, they up to now, they, they, they haven't come back. So emotional health, mental health is part of taking care of our mental health like any other person so that in case something comes that is more powerful, we are able to stand it. We find that our mental health is stronger and not weak. Thank you so much, Dr. Stella. Oh, most welcome. Thank you. And we'll be talking about that today. This is the place you ought to be. Miss Empress, thank you. And Miss Yolanda, go ahead. I didn't want to overlook you there. Please go ahead. You're muted. Hi, thank you so much. Noah, I'm excited kind of um, hearing a little bit about this. I, I've been thinking, you know, I think sometimes we want to talk to somebody or, um, you know, have some issues. I think I'm a pretty um, outgoing person, I think. Um, but um, once in a while, I struggle with lack of enthusiasm or um, lack of um, uh, interest in, in things. Um, and, and I was wondering, is there something that can help you kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making sense, but I'm just, not a lot of things motivate me and, and, and that's kind of weird. Well, it all depends. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I just. Well, Yolanda, I want you to give yourself credit. You showed up. You were motivated <laughs> to click on that button and showed up. So give yourself a hand. There's <laughs> always a starting point. There's always a starting point. When you want to go places, when you want to get unstuck, you have to start somewhere. So I'm glad you're sharing this. Um, so yeah, in the chat box, you can share where you're coming from and I'll let Mofu Elvin, Elvin share my email as well. Because at this moment, I wanted to share with you that, and you brought it up, enthusiasm and excitement. There's a lot of things which kill our fire or possess, or our ability to just be fired up upon life. And this can be events, and this can be the past. So I'm going to go back to my story. I've not always been this excited and fired up about life because I had childhood trauma. At the age of seven, I found myself dangling upside down over a flowing river where my father wanted to dump me. And as I was hearing the voices of my mom and my siblings screaming, I shut my eyes very quickly. And you know what happens. You get anxiety right away. You get welcomed into this world where you have to survive, whether you want it or not. So that was my first experience. When I opened my eyes, something in my mind shifted. And this is what I've come to understand is neuroplasticity. 
Just say neuroplastics, okay? Write down on a piece of paper, neuroplastics, because you are where you're going to tap into that neuroplastic element in your brain today, which will help you to get unstuck. However, as I was experiencing this, I noticed something that even though I was not thrown in the river right away, the thoughts always came to me, like what if I had drowned? But then I realized I was still here. And most of you have heard me share this, that it was a painful experience for me. Not only was it a painful experience for me, I also had other painful experiences. In Africa, they shave the girl's hair off all the time. I've said this time and time again, they shave it with a razor blade. It used to hurt me so much. And if I was in, from Jamaica, I'll say it used to pain me so much. It used to hurt me so much. And I realized something, that every time they cut my hair, my hair grew back again. So I got curious. I said, there must be a force, a force which pushes this hair out despite how many times they cut it. And that force I've come to understand today is neuroplasticity. So the first thing to do, if you want to get unstuck, please write it down, is to believe. You believe there's a higher power. So at a very age, early age in my life, I believed that there's a power which pushes my hair out through these little holes I don't even see. And at that moment, I didn't know anything about the Bible because my dad was not a Christian. My mother was not a practicing Christian. She wanted to, but my dad would not let her. Why do I share this with you? It is curiosity which has led me to be who I am today. So as I was trying to figure out how come, how come he didn't drop me? I know he was drunk, but how come he didn't drop me? I realized something stopped him. Whether that was him or his thoughts or God or someone, but that person, I did not see them. So I knew in my heart that there's a force. And by the age of 18, I began to understand that there's God. So I went to the church, got baptized at the age of 13. So I'm a, seven, a baptized Seventh-day Adventist member. However, you would think for someone who managed to overcome the thoughts of being drowned in the river that you never encounter any other problems out there, that wasn't the case. I brought, broke my leg at the age of eight. I was walking with my mom. Back in Africa, the little children play with tires from cars. Can you believe that? The little boys, they push the tires along the road. I don't know if they still do it, but they did it my day. Unfortunately, the tire knocks me on my leg and my bone is broken. It was when I had the broken bone that the first time my dad would carry me on his shoulders, I experienced at least close contact with him because he wasn't that loving. I recovered from this healing bone, and I'm going somewhere with this. I did not do athletics. The pediatrician then from the hospital put the cast on my leg three times, but I wanna share something with you. I got a letter from the doctor at the age of eight to say that I should never participate in athletics. I should not participate in athletics. I'm telling you this for a story, for a reason. So for years and years, I carried my letter, which was folded. And for those of you who know paper, when you fold paper, it's not plastic. It starts getting ripped around the corners, the edges. Yours truly, from the age of 13, 14, 15, until I was 17, I was at a mission school. I never did athletics. I didn't run. I did the short put and javelin a little bit. Because in my mind, I still had a broken bone. And you would think that even though I went through medical school and I got my bachelor's degree in physical physiotherapy and I was seeing patients, that it would click that your bone is not broken again anymore. I'm telling you this for a reason. At some point, I found myself 
I'm weighing over 335 pounds. That's when I said something got to change. So I've come up with a method which help people get lasting results because I walked through this journey myself. So fast forward, I'm presenting at a workshop at a conference here in Florida and the organizers were paying for my stay. I get a call, hey, Dr. Nemoseso, are you going to be joining the 5K uh, when you come to the conference? I said, 5K, I don't run. He said, why not, Dr. Nemoseso? You can walk if you want to. That's the moment it clicked in my mind that I had a crutch from the age of eight. Then, then I remember this very well telling the girl that I broke my bone at the age of eight. She said, is your bone still broken? <laughs> it's funny, but I'm telling you, that's when I started thinking, I said, wait a minute, she's so right. So I realized that I carried this crutch. I held on to this letter. And then when the letter was gone, in my heart, I still had this broken bone until that particular year. It was in 2000 and something <laughs> when it happened, less than 20 years ago. And I'm saying this to you, sometimes what we think is a crutch which helped you us from getting from one point to the other is now an obstacle. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you ought to do when you're stuck you need to take a piece of paper and I'm giving you practical lessons. I'm not here selling anything from you, but I want you to get unstuck from where you are. Get a piece of paper. On one side, you write what's going on now, how you feel, what you have going on, write it on one side. On the other side, write what you would want to accomplish and how you'd like to feel. It's very simple. Because when we are stuck, we know very well how we feel. We spend more time thinking about how we feel. We spend more time thinking about what's not going on well. And sometimes we don't have enough time in the day to think about where we want to go and how we want to feel. And I'll provide you with the template, those of you who want to, to take it further. It's very important because the brain only knows what it knows. Just like my brain knew that I had a broken bone. I was stuck there for years. I'm telling you, I'm not even making this up. What I didn't tell you, after the lady said that, she then said, you have six weeks, you could start now. I started walking. It took me 22 minutes to walk a mile. Six weeks later, I could jog a mile in 45 minutes. And I went to that 5K. I did my first 5K and I finished in the top 10. And I did three or four other 5Ks after that. I'm telling you this because had I not listened had I not considered the opportunity which was there, I would have still been stuck. So for those of you who want an opportunity to get unstuck, please type opportunity. And for those of you who say it's difficult, just type D, D and O. O means I want the opportunity. And D means I'm just stuck in desire mode, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm doing this for a reason. Your brain, your brain, your brain, which is in your cranial cavity, has neuroplasticity, which is the ability to rewire and reorganize. And for those of you who've been here, I see the, a lot of O's, 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 O's. Yes, I'm loving it. So when I take a piece of paper and I write the word opportunity, I've written it. It's easy for me to say then what are the opportunities and I can list them down. And that's how this God-given gift of neuroplasticity works. I'm telling you, who would have thought a girl who came from Africa who had no pair of shoes would be here with you today? Most people would not say it can be done. I got the science 
from a very young age and I tapped into the science of my neuroplasticity and my God-given power and abilities were able to come to the surface. So you typed opportunity. If you have a piece of paper, write the opportunities which you have today. There's seven days in a week. If every single day you take a moment and write one opportunity, you have seven opportunities in a week. In a year, you will have 365 opportunities. If you take every day and you write 10 opportunities or 10 ideas you have to get you from the left side to the right side, the stuck side to the unstuck side, you will have over 365,000 ideas at the end of the year. And that's, the, that's what I grasped. One, when I was dealing with the pain of being unwanted, I'm like, what opportunities do I have? And you know, when you're an unwanted child, everybody knows. The cousins knows, the grandmas knows, your mom knows, and your mom will never stop talking about it. Like, you know, her father doesn't want her. And she would think she was gaining sympathy. So everybody knew. So it also created an opportunity. Because other people would come forth and their sympathizers, they are like, hey, I know your father doesn't like you. What should you like? Um, well, money for a pair of shoes wouldn't hurt. I never really started crying and say, you know, my dad don't want me. No. Nah. So I became this young lady who benefited from other people's kindness. <laughs> I went to school because of that. Because I realized something. That when I write something down, I've written it. Doesn't matter who has an opinion. It doesn't matter who think I didn't write it. I've written it. So I've co-authored a book with 20 other women this year. It's called Woman Rise. Resilience, R. Intentionality, I. Steadfast in your faith, S. And embracing the opportunities which come with challenges. So I'm here talking to the game changers. I just told you that I have a team mate, a, a colleague who works in Kitwe, Zambia. I can tell you how I met him. I've never seen him. I've seen his pictures. Because challenges come with opportunities. Somebody else introduced somebody to me who later on introduced him to, him, to me. And we have a lot of things in common. He's a digital expert. He teaches people how to be experts in using computers and master these digital marketing tools. And I'm telling you this for a reason. Had I just said the COVID has come, my business, I can't see the 30 patients I was seeing every week. What am I going to do? I'll still be crying. So opportunities show up every day. When we shift our thinking, we see them. So this is one opportunity encounter for someone here for the first time. And for those of you who are taking notes, you want opportunities. And you're beginning to say, so wait a minute, how then could I do this? I want to give every single one of the uh, 48 people who are listening to the sound of my voice today an opportunity. Can you explain in your own words the importance of embracing change and overcoming um, challenges, obstacles? I call them obstacles. I don't like the word challenge because challenge is like it's big. Obstacle is means you can jump over it or skip over it or push it aside or do whatever or penetrate it if you can because you can penetrate the dark and walk in darkness. So um, what is it? That is so important for you to embrace change and overcome the obstacles for your own good personally and professionally. That's a question you can ask yourself every day. If you're not able to answer it here, ask yourself this. How could I explain the importance, why this is important to me? Why is it important to me that I embrace change and overcome obstacles which are standing in my way to grow personally or spiritually or professionally. When you ask a question, 
you come up with answers. And that's one thing I mastered at a very young age. I mastered it at a very young age because I asked a lot of questions and I didn't say anything. And you see what people are made of. It is thundering here and raining here. So if I lose you, I'll try and connect with another device. I'm saying this for a reason. Every day, every day. The Bible says this, because I'm a Bible believer. Every day, it's an opportunity because we are renewed every day. Then there is no two days which are exactly the same. And I proved this. For the 54 years I've been alive, I have never experienced two days which are exactly the same. No, never. However, there's a tendency for humans, for us humans, to think every day is the same. It's not. It's not. I can tell you that. I have not seen the same day show up. Even though Monday through Friday is consistent, but no single day has showed up twice in my life the whole time I've been alive. And that's something I understood at a very young age, identifying what's different. So if you're taking notes, you got one opportunity. That's the first thing I gave you, opportunity. And I said, you write where you are now, how you feel. On the other side is where you're going, how you want to feel. I'm giving you the way to get there, right? So you need to be so much in tune of what's going on in your life because each day presents more opportunities than obstacles. And that's one thing I noticed. I said, wait a minute. Since my father doesn't like me, people know. And so not everybody who knew about his attitude towards me supported him. So that presented opportunities. So those who were not for him were obviously against what he was doing. So they were moved to act. So the next thing you do is you act. <laughs> they acted. These people, some of them wanted me to be a lawyer. I disappointed them because I didn't become a lawyer. They thought I would make a good attorney, which I could have. However, what I'm trying to tell you that my best solution in life is just get into action. I have a PowerPoint, but I can't share it because it's thundering here. Forgive me. I, I don't even have it showing. I'm saying this for a reason. When you identify that each day is different, you begin to think, what's different about today and yesterday? I can tell you what's different about today and yesterday for me, because I know what I did yesterday. And I know how I felt about yesterday, but to tell you the truth, I'm not feeling the same today. Because that's where the challenge is. The challenge is to shift. So to shift from your old thinking to your new thinking, you need to identify things which has meaning to you. And so for each person, that's different. So you now have to say, all right, here's opportunities. Here's me. I've identified the difference between my days. Yes, Elvin, that, that email. Thank you. I've, I've identified my, the difference in my days. And now I got to act. So in order to act now, you need these pillars. And I developed these pillars, which are so powerful that I can really help whoever wants to be helped here. If they are willing to be helped and they're not going to question me, of course, people question. It's fine. You can question me and challenge me. I'm okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. You know what you know. When you know what you know, you know. But the question is, to what extent do you know what you know? Because this is my observation, and I'm going to be really um, a, little, a little pushy here. How many people here attended at least one Zoom session this week? Put in the chat box. If you attended one, put one. If you did five, put five. If you put three, put three. If you did zero, put zero. I want to see like, what's the maximum Zoom sessions somebody attended 
the past seven days. Did anybody attend seven? Anyone yes, seven? I did. One a day? I did, I did more than seven actually, because sometimes I would do two. Okay, so let's let's give you the floor because this is the perfect time for me to. Yes, Miss Empress, you're so helpful. Thank you. Uh, share with us how many. I would say from Monday until today's on Sunday, because like this one is like the third one mm -hmm. for today. <laughs> Let me start from Monday. Monday, yes. uh, I did two, one of which was about Henry Cardobab. It was talking about men's hatred on prostate. And Tuesday, I attended another Zoom meeting which was talking about financial health. Uh, they call it Dead Dragon. Uh, because that is not good. How should you avoid that? Uh, go according to the budget and not go outside the budget. On Wednesday, I attended another meeting about the preaching, about the last event. On Thursday, I may have attended two meetings. There was one about Bible study for the single group. And I attended um, a prayer meeting that is done for character development. So I did two on Wednesday or on Thursday. And on Friday, I also attended more than one. Uh, the first one was where I was presenting on health about the use of water um, in a singles group. And then uh, also another about the lesson discussion, Sabbath school lesson discussion in another group for that night. And then wow. yesterday, I attended more than three, and today I've attended about three. And uh, I may not go to details about all of them, but I really learned a lot from them. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I Did like you hear that. me? You have a... Yes. Yes. And also, sure. I, I, I normally attend a, a morning devotion every day by a, a certain Zoom link, although it's coming from Jamaica, I'm in the UK, but I normally attend it every day in the morning. It's for two hours. They, they have like two sections. The first section, which starts from 4 a.m. to 5, and another one from 5 to 6. Those are, I usually attend every day. They are talking about the Daniel and Revelation and the last day events. Thank you for sharing. You have a very good memory and Miss Empress, thank you for sharing that. And that's been my observation that a lot of people are busy and a lot of people are learning. And thank you, you really did great with that. And I heard from you, you. saying that you actually also presented, which was great. And this brings me to my next point. When you learn something, if you don't share it, it's hard to remember it. So remember, we talked about opportunities. We talked about you identifying what's different, and then you're getting in action. So getting in action has to do with three things, three things. And I'm going to state is gaining knowledge. You heard her say how much she learned and how what she is gaining knowledge. So you have to decide. What is it that I need to know to get from where I'm stuck to where I want to go? So you have to know first. You had a share, all your webinars, and some of you said zero, and some of you said six, some of you said three. So you can go back to mm -hmm. those webinars which you attended and say, what is it that I learned? Because knowledge 
has levels and I knowledge has levels. It has, this is what I heard. This is what I understood. This is what I can explain. This is what I recognize. And this is what I can defend. I just gave you a summary of it, but it's a hierarchy. Knowledge has levels of, of knowing, of learning. So you heard her, and if you listen to her very carefully, she said, I attended this because of this, I attended this and, and I presented this. And I believe you probably could be a medical missionary or you're one of those people who's an advocate, who's a leader in your community. Everybody is a leader. Why I'm telling you this, because when I was going through, can you mute those mics, please? We have a lot of them open. Uh, when I was going through a life as a teenager, um, not having much support meant that my confidence was very low. And I shared this two weeks ago. I, I didn't even have like the confidence, but I knew I was gifted. Deep in my, inside, you always know there's some fire somewhere and you know it's just waiting for somebody to light it up. I was one of those kids. Oh, you attended 15. Thank you for sharing Empress. That's interesting. And for those of you who need support and Empress is a resource. She's just sharing a lot of knowledge. Thank you. So I actually I sharing... wanted to become a medical missionary and that's why I'm trying to learn both the health and um, gospel. Thank you. And I will get be able to share with you some resources. Thank you. So here Thank we are. Yes, thank you. So here we are. It's a person sometimes shows up to this place like this and their confidence is very low. I want to tell you a, a lived experience of a young girl who was almost dropped in the river and now you're living with fear that if I say something, my dad might dump me this time in the river. So internally, there's always conflicts. We are not sure. We are not um, thinking that um, it's possible. And then somebody shows up and asks you to do something. So I asked her to share what she has for a reason because I wanted to really use her as an example. She came up and she shared. So at the age of about 13, my principal decides that I'm going to be the senior patrol in Africa, they call them prefects. I was going to be the junior head girl. I'm like, what? Who? I'm not doing that. I was thrust in leadership when I was not even thinking I'll be a leader. And he said, I have seen in you the potential and I'm not backing off. I'm going to do what I can to see that you can use all that you have to influence others for the good. I was a good kid. I was very intelligent and acing all my classes from kindergarten. But fear came upon me. I cried so hard. I've never cried in all my life. But he said, you can cry all you want. You're one of my leaders. And to this day, when I talk to my former principal from when I was 10, 11, 12, he tells this story. He's like, you, I knew you'd go places. And I'm saying this to you here, that it takes not just knowledge to get unstuck. You need the support. I, and I need to acknowledge someone here. I overlook to acknowledge this uh, Miss Vivian Newman here, who's a, a nurse practitioner. She resides in the state of Florida. She's originally from Barbados. This lady is a master guide who's passionate about making a difference. And she reminds me of how somebody had to be there for me. So because somebody was there for me, her and I are always talking about how can we be there for the younger generation, the ones who are trying on their own, even those of our generation who are trying to, to get onto the next level. So with me, that ability to overcome came with a little bit of creativity on my part. In elementary school, before I became a leader, they asked me to narrate a play about Isaac and Rebecca. And I was supposed to narrate it. But because I always thought 
maybe I can do something different. Maybe one day I'll be the one to just be known for something that always is in us. It doesn't matter what age, there's always some fire in you, which is just late, waiting to be lit to spark. So here goes a nine year old, that's me. Instead of narrating that play, I decide I'm gonna sing it. <laughs> so I go out there and I go, Isaac and Rebecca had two sons, Esau and Jacob. And my teacher, my music teacher came to me. She said, you, he said, you, you did something I never expected to do. And I'm telling you this for a reason because somebody here might be at a place where they're not sure of themselves. Just do it. I did it, age of nine. That same teacher, fast forward, I saw him in 2011. He cried so hard. He was, I, I just bumped into him when I went to Africa at a, at a uh, grocery store. And I said, Mr. Guaria, he said, who are you? I said, one of your students from the second grade. I think it was second grade. And he said, oh my goodness. He broke down in tears and he said, I was always wondering where is this woman? And it hit me. I said, how you, would you want a woman? I was only a little girl. He said, there are some people you meet who you know have what it takes. So I'm sharing this with you because every single person here, just like Empress shared, you have what it takes. And I'm the person who is in your presence telling you that you have the opportunity to get unstuck. Whether you sing a song like I did, or you write your story, or you share your testimony, or you share what you've learned. So this action piece means, one, you got to open your mouth and say something, or you have to write something down and present it to someone for feedback, because feedback is a good part of getting unstuck. That's feedback. Science tells you that. Tells you that. So I got feedback at a younger age. And then when I got thrust into leadership, I got feedback when I least expected it. Then I said, wait a minute. So somebody sees something in me, which I don't see. And so in order to get stuck, you need someone who gives you feedback, who sees that part of you, which you don't see. And it's okay for a person to tell you you're too loud, you know, there are people who came to me at the age of nine when I sing that instead of narrating, they're like, did you have to do that? You're the first person who does it. Besides, your voice is not that good. But guess what? My teacher said, you creative. You're the first one to sing that narration of that play. We've done this play for years here. We've had students who go through this screen. You're the only one who can do that. So creativity and innovation is in you. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with education. It has nothing to do with uh, where you are. It has everything to do with the gift of God he put in you. And it's just getting ready to surface. So when you get knowledge, you go to, from hearing, which is what you're hearing now, understanding, which is the next level, um, discussing which is another level you got to discuss it to make sense hey did she really say that yeah she said that and what do you think about it well this is what i think about you got to engage in a dialogue with someone so before i forget we've created a space which is a forum which i will share the links with you because i realize that people have to talk with those people who are on the same path with them so it's a free forum you don't have to join but you can i'm going to use that is a resource hub to help those who want to get unstuck. So when you get feedback, it's not always gonna be pleasant. And that's when resilience comes in. So remember I talked about rise, resilience, resilience. So you gotta, and resilience is known by different words. It's known as tenacity, it's known as grit, it's known in other places is being strong-headed. <laughs> I've heard people say that. It's really the ability to bounce back. The ability not just to bounce back to a place you knew before, but also to bounce back to where God ought had a plan for you. 
So this resilience word is something I just hear of more now, but I've always been resilient. And I can tell you why. Growing up with parents who didn't have much, it, means maybe, it meant that time you only had one porcelain doll. That's time they used to make dolls with heads like a cup, a teacup. That's porcelain for those of you who don't know were born in the 70s or 80s or 90s or 2000. Anyhow, so this porcelain dolls was like a cup, just like you have a teacup, that kind of material. When you dropped it, the head was gone. And when you come from a poor family or family, my, mom, my dad was an engineer, so he wasn't poor, but from a family where your dad doesn't think you get something else once you get it once, you learn. You learn to take pieces of fabric and make the doll for the head, the head for the doll. I did a lot of that. So when you make something with your hands, whether what you're making is baking or cooking or sewing or writing or gardening, God gave us these hands to feed into our brains. And that's how neuroplasticity is enhanced. So yours truly, you know what I did? I used to make the doll's head from torn garments of clothing. Then I realized that's too much work because the leg will break because the belly sometimes was made of cloth, but the arms and the legs were made of porcelain. Who did that? And those are the baby dolls we some of us played with back because I was born in 69, I'm 54. And you realize, but there's corn husks. So this is what I did. And I'm telling you this for a reason, because I want you to do what you need to do to get unstuck. I made those dolls in corn husks, not just one. I realized I could make more than one. I lined them up. In my mind, as I was growing up, I was going to be a dressmaker, because I'll make dresses for my children. I was going to be a baker, so I can bake bread for my kids. And I was going to be a teacher so I can teach my kids. So I lined them up and I taught them. I even preached to them when I started going to church. I would just lined up. And then later on, of course, you play with other kids where you play mom and dad. We did that a lot. But one thing I'm telling you this, to get in action, you got to do something. Even on these sessions, which I present when I'm presenting, you know, I'm presenting. Say, hey, Dr. Stella, can I do a segment? That's you. You gotta get out of this comfort zone and get to where your brain can begin to understand that doing doesn't kill you, but it makes you. And that's, 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 that's how you get unstuck, okay? Quite often, some of the young minds which are here, some of the young people, my team, who I connect with from all over the world, who say, but Dr. Stella, uh, you know, and I'm going to put V on a spot. She said that. She called me today. She said, hey, Dr. Stella, you really helped me. I wanted to know that I love you. That's what she said. So I put people to a test. I said, good. I like that. And I like that. So I said, write it down. And sometimes when you're writing something you don't know, your brain hurts. It's normal. It's normal to sweat. It's normal for the brain to say, you can't do it. But you got to do it anyhow. So Miss V, she typed that and she sent it to me. She said, hey, Dr. Stella, can you look at it and give me feedback? I didn't get a chance to do that, but I will. My dear friends, today is the opportunity for you to get unstuck. So there's two tools I'm going to give you access to, because I think we'll have to continue this conversation next week. Two tools. One is the will of life. So. Um, Annette, can you type in the chat box our group so I can post it in the group because I'm not going to post it here. It's a PDF. Um, this document, I'm sharing it with you now. It's a document. I mentioned it two weeks ago. It's a document which can give you something measurable. One of the reasons why we get stuck is because sometimes we are not able to measure to what extent am I stuck? Remember I told you that days are different. Okay, so if yesterday I was stuck and I was alone and today I'm, I will go to 
Viv, Vivian's house because we live in the same neighborhood. And I get there and I, she chit chats with me and she cheers me up. I don't feel stuck anymore, right? And you, you've experienced this because when you escape like your painful spots, you feel comfortable. But when I come back home, I get back to be stuck again. And the reason why that's a cycle is because as human beings, we know how to feel pain, but we don't know how to quantify it. And that's how I'm able to help my patients with pain. I can help a lot of people with pain quick because I know I ask them on a scale of one to 10, how much pain do you have? And they tell me it's 11. I'm like, okay, where? They tell me it's a shoulder. And I know how, what's in the shoulder. So I hold that shoulder, I'll stretch it and I'll move it around. And I'm like, now tell me, how much pain do you have? Then they tell me, oh, it's a six. Or I'll measure the shoulder. I have a goniometer with angles. So I'll measure the shoulder. I know 180 is full motion. And I'll say, okay, right now you're at 90 degrees. So I can measure range of motion of most shoulders because I have the tools. So I realized something when it comes to getting stuck, people don't know how to measure to what extent because there's too many components. There's too many components which play a part in being stuck. And so when you don't like sit down and quantify them and identify them, you identify them first and quantify them it feels like you're not, you can't go anywhere because you haven't taken that opportunity to, to look at it from a different angle. So I hope all of you are in that group. If not, I'll still send you another link. So what I need you to do um, is this. You take this document, which I'm going to send with, for you in the group. You then, Look at the segments, and most of you say that already in here. I heard it that um, someone doesn't feel excited about life. I heard it that someone is wanting to become a missionary. And I've heard these things over and over of people who desire to go places. So you desire, and you showed up, and you get started. And that's, that's, I'm a proponent for that. I get people moving. That's what I do. That's what I do for a living. Uh, so when you get this wheel now, you choose the segments and rate yourself. The center of the circle is a zero. The perimeter, which is the, the round part of the circle is a 10. Yes, it's relative, but it doesn't matter because my nine is different from your nine. But if I make a decision today, to say when it comes to my spiritual life, I'm at a two. It's an example I'm giving you. Then I know that I want to be a 10. Then I can identify through the next tool I'm going to give you how to get there. It's that simple. Whether that how to get there is to call me, text me, or to say, hey, Elvin, I heard you're in Kitwe. I'm in Zambia. I'm also in Kitwe. Can I get with you? Hey, Viv, I heard you in Florida. Hey, Yanet. Or, you know, Empress, I heard you are in UK. Can we get together? You now have an opportunity, whether that's through networking, through a Zoom session, through a book you read. It just, the brain doesn't know all that. The brain just knows that you are taking your knowledge and applying it. You are seeing an opportunity to get creative, just like I did at a very young age. Make those doors out of corn husks, line them up, get some leaves from the, the cornfield, squash them up and make a meal. I make all my meals. I don't eat out. I'm not even making that up. I go eat out once in a while with Viv when she takes me out, but she still eats squat. I don't. Because at a young age, I realize I can crush those leaves and I still crush them today. So I'm a medical missionary from a very young age. I know how to use those things very well, but I never went to medical missionary school, but because I've been curious. So friends of mine, your curiosity, which made you show up and say, I wanna get unstuck, is a great foundation. However, don't go aimlessly from Zoom to Zoom, from Zoom to Zoom and not getting lasting results because time is of an essence.
When you learn something, apply it. Recognize where you are. It's like a step. You are here now, you feel stuck at step one. You know what step two looks like. Step two is going to be you to grab that wheel of life and do it. That's your step two for you. And when you do it, then you go into the next step. The next step is simple. It's the simplest step. How many people here have been dreaming? Like you're dreaming, you're dreaming of your big dream, or you have a, a, a vision, you want to do something great. Anybody? Anyone here has been dreaming for a while or planning to make it to the next level? Does that sound like you? I see one hand. Thank you. Anybody else who came here and say, well, I just want to get unstuck. Okay, so the next thing you do, thank you, I see some hands there and I see some charts in the chat box. The next thing you do, after you take that wheel of life and you, um, you, you map where you are, just be, just be consistent. It doesn't matter. Nobody's giving you a pass or fail. That's one thing I'm gonna tell you, my friends, that this whole idea that there's a pass and fail has kind of crippled a lot of people over the years. Because it's not about pass and fail. It's about progress. It's not about perfection. It's about taking strides. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying, because for most people here, they are there already. They are already there where they were um, thinking about it. They've been showing up. They've been really persistent in trying to get unstuck. And they are like, I'll do anything to get unstuck. I've heard people say that, oh, Dr. Stella, I'll do anything to get up through this pain. And when people say that, I'm like, great, let's get started. So if you feel like that, like you do anything to get unstuck right now, you're in the right place. Get that wheel and you, you start uh, writing it. So on this wheel, you're going to see that you have spirituality. If spirit, spirituality matters for you, you put you where you are. If you feel you're a one, then you put it on a one. I've shared it in the chat box there. Sorry if I posted it twice. The will and right in that same document, you're going to also find a link which I created for you. And this link will take you through a process, right? So for most of you who raise their hands here who have a dream, you know very well that a dream is a good starting point. When we dream, whether we daydream or not, it doesn't matter. It's a good starting point. It's a plus. But we know that dreaming forever and wishing forever doesn't change anything. It changes how we feel. And sometimes it's frustrating that you're at this place where you're always dreaming or always thinking or always planning and then nothing happens of it. You get disappointed. So the next thing you're going to do is go to the next link, which is on that document I shared with you which will take you through a process. And I'll highlight the process here so that nobody leaves you and say, what do I do with this? You know what to do exactly. You know how you feel today. And you also know how you want to feel, right? So it's a matter of, oh, you want me to share the link for the document? Okay. It's a matter of you saying with where I feel, where, how I feel now. And if somebody is not in their WhatsApp group, you can, you can text, email, I'll send it to you. Um, this is how I feel right now. And this is where I've rated myself. But how do I really move forward in a way which is meaningful, in a way where I don't go backwards? Because I know some people have told me, I've tried, I did this, I did that, and then I went backwards, and I don't even know uh, what, what to do next. I've heard people say that. Going backwards is okay, as long as 
you identify how and why you're going backwards. Because when you know how and why you're going backwards, you have some starting point. So there's three things which I'm gonna urge you to do from coming from this. The first one, complete your wheel of life where you rate yourself. When you finish it, if you join the dots of where your number is, it might look like a cobweb and it's okay. Cobwebs, we can get rid of those. Uh, it might look a perfect circle for someone here, like they have all tens, it's okay. And so for anyone who gets between a zero and a five on any one of them, there's a question I want you to ask yourself. What makes it a five and not a three? There's a reason why I'm telling you this. Remember I told you there's a process of change. Change is painful. Change can be challenging, but change is also liberating. So what happens is this. When I identify I have a five on my spiritual journey or my relationship journey or my career path, I have a five. And I ask myself, what makes it a five and not a three, right? The gap between a three and a five is something which I can harness and build on to make it between a six and a 10. There's a science to this because the fact that I'm not at a three means that I'm at 50%. There's something which makes it not a three. Because some way, maybe you've rated yourself a three on something and you know what that, why is a three, right? There is something about the human brain which has to do with perception. And most of you have heard this, that when you look at a glass half, half, half empty, you will see it negatively. Some people say it's a, it's a mindset and I can do a mindset session if people want that, but there's enough of them out there. Um, when you look at a glass half full, you get contented, right? However, this process I'm giving you is not for you to deem yourself a failure. It's for you to have a starting point to build on, right? So there's a couple of factors which matter when it gets, comes to getting unstuck. And I'll tell you what they are. One is self-efficacy, self-efficacy. Can somebody type that word efficacy? And if somebody wants me to explain, I'll explain. So picture this, it is me. Yes, thank you, Veronica, it's me. I was in this room last week, two weeks ago, talking about anxiety. And I heard people say, how do you get unstuck? And I said, well, I'm gonna do a session on how to get unstuck. So self-efficacy is this. I decide to do this session. I ask myself between one and 10, it's a scale between one and 10. How confident am I that I'm going to do this session next Sunday? So there's a lot of factors. I just told you about the thunderstorm. So I have to think before I rate myself between one and 10, how confident? Self-efficacy has to do with confidence. I have to look at a lot of factors. So if I give myself a seven to a 10, it means I'm going to do it. So I use this method. I didn't know what it was until I come across the self-efficacy. It's a scale and it's true. So the self-efficacy is such that when you, Veronica, leave this place and say, I have a dream and I've done my, uh, my, my wheel of life and I see, I want to work on my professional growth. I'm just using Veronica as an example and I'll take your example so I can help you walk through it. 
Veronica then says, well, I want to uh, have build a business, successful business by the end of the year. I want to get started. Veronica has to ask herself, between one and 10, how confident am I that by December 31st, I'll have started this business? So you rate yourself, Veronica, and if you give yourself a seven, you, chances of you doing it are higher than when you give yourself a below seven. So when it comes to self-efficacy, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's cooking a meal, going to a vacation, when you rate yourself less than a seven on any of those elements you're working on, chances of it happening are very little. And there are factors which might be leading you to a place where you're rating it low. And these factors could be, again, go back to my example of the session. I could say, maybe we're gonna have a storm in Florida, so I might not be able to do it. So I have to think, so if there's a storm, can I deliver this without a PowerPoint? And if I say yes, I'll do it. And perhaps somebody else is gonna be sick and I might have to be somewhere. So if I give myself a seven now, my brain, is gonna do everything I can to make sure I do it. Come rain or thunder, with or without a PowerPoint, with or without a handout, I'm gonna do it because I know that I believe I'm gonna do. So self-efficacy is a scale which you can use for every single thing you have, you plan to do. Whether that's disciplining your children, cooking a healthy meal, becoming a good medical missionary, becoming a motivational speaker, being an IT expert, everything, you can just say, how confident am I? Here's the scale. So when you go through this list of things you want to accomplish, you can start questioning yourself, why is it not a 10? But if you question yourself, why is it not a 10? You might feel discouraged, but think about why it's not a three, because whatever brought it from a three to a, to a seven is the very thing which is gonna help you to get it from a seven to a 10. Whether that is coming to my sessions every time I do them or staying in the group or zooming around every day, it doesn't matter. The brain doesn't know. Your brain and my brain doesn't even know. It doesn't care. Your brain and my brain doesn't care whether I attend a Zoom or not. It just cares if I move to the next level, that's it. And so I say this not to be negative, but I have seen people all my life, and Vivian can tell you this, I once get, did a session called Getting Into Action to Overcome Burdens about 16 years ago. And I know people who are still where they are today who were there 16 years ago. She knows some people too, some are worse. And when I was doing that session, I was letting them know that you can do a few things like declutter your house, right? You can do forgiveness. It was simple stuff like that. And you can just do a smart goal setting. And I have to find it, I can share it. There are people who are still going to church today who are still feeling the same way they felt. And some of them have felt worse because they're getting older. So my friends, I'm not here to sell you anything, but I'm here to let you know that you, have an opportunity. So you have the will of life. You have the self-efficacy ruler. I'm going to share it in the group and I'm going to give you another ruler, another ruler. It's called importance ruler. Yeah, it's called the importance ruler. So with two rulers, most of you know rulers, some of you know centimeters, some of you know inches. I know both systems. The centimeters are easy because the centimeters are intense, they're easier than inches because there's, there's 12 inches in a foot, <laughs> you know? So you can't use a foot for this. You might have to use a, just a, a ruler. So you could take a ruler, a 10 centimeter ruler and mark those points from zero to 10. Here is my confidence ruler and here is my importance ruler. So on the importance ruler, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna use someone here as an example. Here's Annette here. 
I'm going to use Annette. Annette is an example. So if Annette says, I have been stuck with negative thoughts and I want to get unstuck. And it's not a real story. It's just an example. I want to start thinking different. Yannette has to say, how confident am I that I'm going to do this? If she gives herself a seven, she's good. She gives herself a less than a seven. She needs to gain the knowledge to build that confidence. And that's my point here. Mm. And then she needs to go to the importance ruler and say, with the goals I've set, which is SMART goals, I'll share again the SMART goals sheet. I shared it a couple months ago, sometime last year. How important is it that by December 31st, 2023, my thinking will be different? That's, and that's Yannette for you. And if Yannette gives herself a seven and below, mm, chances are she'll still be thinking the same. She might get support from a person like me and I'll be able to coach her through the process. She might read a self-help book and, and get it done. But chances are, if she rates herself less than a seven, she'll be thinking the same thoughts in December. Christmas will come to celebrate Christmas, but by January, she'll be back there. And I've seen people, and I, I've worked with patients, so I know what I'm talking about. I've seen people like, I didn't even know that's how it, the brain works. The brain works with structure. That's why you have the frontal lobe, the center for decision-making. The center for decision-making is the frontal lobe. That's why the Bible talks about the mark on the forehead. It's reasoning. And the brain is receiving senses, information from your senses. You are seeing me, you are hearing me. You can't feel me because I'm at a distance. You can't smell me from a distance, but you can imagine how I smell. You can imagine how I feel if you want to. Your brain gets signals from your senses and it makes sense of them every day, every single day. Whether you're in a Zoom, you're in the shower, you're eating, you're talking to me, you're laughing, signals, signals constantly coming. What a brain with so much power. So if I don't decide what's important goes in my brain, I might just be going through the motions here. And that's what human beings have been doing. Wait until AI shows up here because AI is already here. It's thinking for us, it might probably overtake us because a lot of us have been stuck, have been stuck for a long time because it's not our fault. Just like I got stuck with the fear of water. I still don't swim. I go to the ocean. I just walk. I just kind of put water on me like that. I don't swim. I know how to swim, but I, I'm afraid to just drown in there. So for a long time, I didn't even want to go to near water or fish from a distance. But I can get in water now. And I'm fine. My dad is not there to drown me. You see what I'm saying? Just like I had the fear to run that 5K. My bone is not broken. I can run a 5K now at 54 if I want to. But imagine all those years wasted up to the age of 38, afraid that the bone is broken. Things have to change. And I, I, I'm a proponent of the gospel, by the way. I, like, I, I preach sometimes. And I've seen where change needs to take place. So for those of you here, you are invited to this family of people who are passionate about helping each and every one of you. And I know that somebody came here today and they were just wondering, maybe they have a personal question and they don't wanna ask in the group, feel free to inbox me privately. I'll not call your name, I'll respond. Maybe somebody came here today thinking I'm tired, just tired of getting stuck. I came across my patient who told me that I am so sick and tired and sick and tired of being sick. And I said, what does that mean? And when I listened to him, he told me, he's sick and tired of going to the doctors 
So I said, which doctors do you go to? He started listing them down. I said, when did you go to these doctors? And he started writing him down. And when I drilled down to it, I realized that he's not even going to most of those doctors he's sick and tired and sick and tired of. <laughs> he was in his mind. Um, sometimes we're just sick and tired of being stuck. And yet we are not. Because we showed up here. We have freedom to click and show up and speak and ask questions. This is your moment. That's what I tell everybody I come across. It's your moment to move to the next level. You're no longer stuck. You have tools now. You can live here today and do your will of life. And then use your confidence ruler, set your goals. And then you can click on the community link, which I just sent in the chat box and join there. It's gonna be a forum of people talking about how we are getting unstuck. I'm here to every, help every single one of you to get unstuck. I show up like, like Peter, Paul and Peter and Silas and say, silver and gold have I not. But I know the God I serve has brought you here so you can get unstuck. And when you get unstuck, it's easy to help your family member who's draining you because they're also stuck. We live in a world where when someone is stuck, they make it worse for us. So we become these problem solvers, just like I shared with you about the young man who to this day, he gave me his testimony. I have it on my phone. I never showed, shared it. I never said who it was. But who to this day, he's not here today, is out there making a difference. Because what he told me that day, he said, mom, he calls me mom. He said, mom, you help me think. I have a ministry which can help women. So said, how in the world are you going to help women if you're not there? You got to be present. You can't harm yourself. You can't take your life. You can't do anything. You got to be there. He said to me, after we had prayed and uh, exchanged a few words, he said, you made me realize that I can overcome. And he did. He never looked back again. It was just like a 30, 45 minute session. Sometimes it takes that one call, like you heard Venice share today. That one call to just give you a little help, support. Just like my teacher, who when I sang the narrator, the narration of a play, really saw something in me. And to this day, I can sing. I taught myself how to sing. I went to music school later to play piano and the saxophone. And my brain still hurt in the learning process. Brain can hurt. It can hurt so much that you get hungry and you want to eat everything in the house. I've seen that. I've experienced that. So when your brain is hurting, that's when you have to call on someone. So one thing I'm going to do and I'm committed to do is to help each and every one of you understand how you can journey side by side with others with another person. I've already created the resource. I just had to have Mofu here help me get it out. We've already put a lot of time in this and thought in this, that our people who not live life stuck. And thank you, Annette and V for bringing this word up because I wasn't thinking up until two weeks ago, I never thought the issue was getting stuck because I think as an academic, as an educator, as a clinician, as a mother, as a believer, I don't really think it's a certain level. But when the two of them said this, I said, wait a minute, but I wrote a book about resilience and I've talked about depression and then I got it. I said, wait a minute, it's the steps to follow. So what I'm committing myself to give you is a step to follow. So I wanna see by show of hands or type in the chat box, if you have a plan, to continue on this journey. Please share your email. You can send it to me directly or send it to Chikwada Mofu, who's one of the, if you desire to say, I am not stopping here. Just like Dr. Stella, who started by teaching her corn husk made dolls. She later on became a university professor who taught students who knew nothing about healthcare in 18 months and they became licensed in the US, its national level. I brought a lot of students through my programs 
who knew nothing about the human body from construction and they aced their Federation State Board exam the first time they took it. I sat down with my students and I reasoned with them and I taught them how to learn. Most of them didn't know how to learn. Someone here might just be wondering how they learn. How do I learn? How do I go to from one Zoom session and apply? And I realized when I was a professor, that was a stumbling block to many. That's why I retired early to help someone here understand that it doesn't really take an education. It takes you showing up and doing. So before I close, I want to say this. I said this before. Learning has three levels. The first level is the cognitive where the brain is working, the ears are hearing, the questions are coming up. That's the cognitive level. And that's what most of the Zoom sessions are doing. And I'm not being negative, I'm being honest. Most of the Zoom sessions are leaving people at the knowledge level. Knowledge is when you just learn, 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 learn. You understand it, you can say it, you can say it, you can say it, you can recite, you can explain it. That's the first level of learning, that's one level. The next level is the skills level, where you take your knowledge, you translate it in a skill. Just like I knew that if my baby doll breaks and has no head, I don't wanna look like a, a baby doll without a head. I wanna take that old fabric and make a doll for this, a head for this doll. But then I realized if I leave it in the rain, it gets rained on, it doesn't dry. Then I thought, but the corn husks go through rain all the time and the sun dries them. So why not? Why not just make a baby doll if I forget it outside, if nothing will happen to it. And that's what I did. I'm not even making this up. I'm telling you the truth. So I started making this and then I said, wait a minute. The next level of learning is not just the skills, it's me teaching someone else how to do it. So when I was at the University of Zimbabwe in Africa, I had a sewing machine on campus. I'm not making this up. My friends would tell you this. I realized something as a student, there's weddings to go to, there's church to go to, and I need a new dress. So I can't afford it. So I, bought a, I, I borrowed a sewing machine from a friend of mine's sister. She wasn't using it. And I put it in my room on campus and I bought fabric and I made my dresses right there for the weddings, for this and that. And my, I taught my friend, my friend and I became the dressmakers for us. And I'm telling you this for a reason. It's not, I have a sewing machine here. I can make a dress, I can make anything. When you have taught someone what you have learned and what you have applied, you have mastery. So learning any skill has to go through the steps of cognitive, which is I heard you, I understood you, and I know what you're talking about, to the skills level, which is I went home, I wrote down, this is what I wrote. That's why I made V, write it. I make every single person who comes to me to say I'm doing this, I'm going write it. Because if you don't write it, you can't move forward. And when you've written it, you take it, you teach someone else. And this brain, which God created, has so much potential. You all have heard that the most place where these unused brains is the cemetery. People go to sleep with ideas. And some people who have the most brilliant ideas never apply them because of fear. And we've addressed that today. You get faith. You take the leap and you do it. And some people do it because they once were discouraged. So they, they're afraid of discouragement. And some people do it because there's nobody else there to support them. And that's why we are forming a community to help people get unstuck. Whether you're getting unstuck from, for your health reasons, you're getting unstuck for your business idea, you're getting unstuck for dealing with relationships, that's exactly what Mofu and I are going to help you with because we have the resource which you can access anytime from anywhere. 
So I'm saying to this, this for a reason. I don't want you to live here empty-handed. There's someone here who feels like, Dr. Stella, you haven't met my needs. Please, after V has spoken, take this opportunity and open your mic and speak. I will entertain your questions, then I'll hand it back to the, uh, to the hosts. I just want to say, I am so grateful that I had to have the opportunity to be here and it is a blessing to me. I was not able to make the notes, but I'm sure gonna be calling up Dr. Stella to get more information about it. It's really a blessing to me. And I have learned a whole lot. I am feeling move, like I'm moving. So I'm on my marathon, I'm on my 5K, my mental 5K. So I just wanna say thank you and thank you to, to allow the Lord to be using you. That's powerful. <laughs> and so the audio will be shared in the group. It might not be on YouTube because, but it will be shared one way or the other. Thank you. Miss Veronica here is, does a good job sharing all our recordings. Thank you, Miss Veronica for the hard work you do. Just want to acknowledge her for that work. Yes, go ahead. Amen. And one more point, Dr. Stella. It, I shall not soon forget that brains lie waste in the cemetery. <laughs> don't, don't go there. I've seen them and I've seen some people who had ideas. Uh, I want to share this with you. The, you nailed it. So I had a patient, a client who I saw, and she had a writing about opals, I still have it, I found it. I, like 18, 20 years later, I still have it. And I thought about her. She had written a pile like this. She had a pile of things she had written and none of them got published. It's like a little article in the newspaper and I had a copy of it, she gave it to me. And she said to me, one day, maybe you can write this. And I didn't think much about, about it until this year. I looked for it and I see, I still have it. And I think about Miss Opal, I call her Miss Opal, but that's not her real name, Opals, because it was Opals. And I write in one of the books, which I'm putting out there about how these Opals are just there and, and they're waiting for someone to just encourage them. So I'm here to encourage you. Thank you for that um, as well. And I want to, before we close, we pray here, I want to talk about the mental health part because somebody mentioned it. Mental health has to do with the processing of information. Information which is coming to the brain through the senses and information which is triggered by thoughts, okay? So you can change your thoughts and change mental health to a certain extent. I gave you the anxiety screening test and the depression scale last week, which I'll reshare for those who want it in the group. So when, when you're going through stuff, you need to identify a few things. You need to gain knowledge of what you're going through and see what skills do I have to cope with what I'm going through and how do I feel about what I'm going through and then who can support me. Whether that support is a friend, a family member, a professional or someone you have to pay, you decide. Because it's not mental health is a situation which sometimes shows up. There are diagnoses like depression, schizophrenia, psychosis, um, you know, severe anxiety, which exists, which in most cases they need medication. However, you have to know what your triggers are. If you know what your triggers are, you have to be proactive and do something about it. If it's an environment you can't escape, then you have to take a mental escape. You can vacation while somebody's yelling at you. I learned that from being a child when my dad used to be yelling at me. I will just be looking at him and I'll be thinking about my next dream. I had to teach myself that. And I know my siblings struggled with that and they still to this day struggle to get over that hump. Um, so I wanna encourage you to do what they call visualization. So if you have 
a situation where you are in, which you need a, a consultant or you need a specialist, please consult one. But if you're just one of those people who are feeling down, not excited about life, envision how you want to feel. So one thing I'm going to share with you is um, it's a vision. It, it's a vision, whether you call it a dream vision or a health vision. I'm going to share with you the resource in the group and the directions on how to do this. You have to see yourself there. You have to see yourself going places you've never been. Because if you don't see yourself going places, you will remain where you are. Had I not seen myself, I would never have read a book. But guess what? I saw an opportunity. Nobody's there. I grab whatever book I read. Whether it was romance, I knew about that stuff before they even taught me about it. Because I'll get Barbara Cutland's book and read it. I'm like, huh? Things like that exist? So my friends, time management matters. Next week, you're going to be with me in this same space. We are going to be talking about, um, let me think of the title again. Okay, uh, fear of missing out, FOMO, F-O-M-O, and joy of missing out, J-O-M-O. Because in as much as we share this information like this, there's also these other things which are taking too much of our times so that we are not being creative in the path we ought to go. And part of it is driven by that formal. And we need to transition from formal to JOMO. So next week, that's what we're going to be talking about. I'll take your hand. Somebody had a hand up. Go ahead. Jesse. Hi, good afternoon from Trinidad. Dr. Stella, you are a wonderful woman. Um, I came on late, uh, missed up the time, and just this end that I'm hearing is such, so rich. What I want to ask is this. <sighs> I have heard all that you have said, and yes, you have put me on another wavelength of dreaming. And yes, I'm asking myself, how am I going to get from dreaming to reality of, you know, producing? Um, what if you are in a family where, you know, you, you don't have the resources at all? Um, and when I say you don't have it, it's because it is being denied you. And even even though you are uh, making, you are trying to make steps to, to progress, you know, there, there, is, there is a factor that is pulling you every time uh, you try to move forward. And on top of it, you know, you have children who are special. So um, like in my case, I can't, think of myself as I always have to think about my children first and their needs first. So how do you put all of that into the mix? Because I was once, I was once um, in a particular profession, but I was forced to stop. And um, well, from that point on, you know, the years have gone, the years have passed by. And what happened as the years passed by, my confidence started to drop. And I think, I don't know if there, there is that. Well, of course there should be, there is that issue where when confidence starts to drop, even your memory go, goes. And where the, the, there is trauma and where there is, where there is instability, um, it really affects your, as you just said, your mental state. So right now, going even going into a setting where there's like more than four people will 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 cause a fright in me, and, and I will start to measure people against myself. And I will 
eventually conclude, no, I, I can't make it in that mix because there's so much better than me. So even though, you know, I'm, I have all these ideas in my head, they're actually sometimes being shut down. I, I just can't move from there to even thinking about how to make it a reality. So what do you do in that case? Thank you. You're muted, Stella. Thank you. Yeah, so if you are not um, in, the, in the group, the psych therapy group, the link was shared, I'll reshare it with you again. You need um, to get started with that wheel of life. So what I'm hearing you say, it's a relationship um, situation. You know, we, we don't live in a vacuum. We live with other people. And other people don't always think like us. And because other people don't think like us, sometimes we find ourselves in situation. The good thing is those people who don't think as, like us, they've not taken away our ability to think. So you have to shift. So part of what I'm thinking of is you um, gaining a deeper perspective of self-compassion and empathy. Um, some people have no empathy. They don't know how to put themselves in the shoes of others. And some people also have a challenge of being compassionate to themselves. When we've been through trauma, we avoid trauma. And also sometimes the best of us is not encouraged. So that's why this group was formed. Mm -hmm. And so what I encourage you to do is stay connected. I am familiar of a church in Trinidad I'm not sure which part of Trinidad it is, but I'm familiar of a church one or so church in, 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 in Trinidad. So what I'm thinking, hearing on what you're saying, you have to just build your confidence. Perhaps being with four people is not the key. It's just being with what, that one other person to bounce back ideas with, to pray with, and just continue to journey on. Your children needs you and you are here. So the power of presence, being present, things happen to us because we are present, okay? Everything which happened to me, happened to me because I was there. So one thing I started doing is to value the fact that I'm there. So I shared, the, shared my story and I, I'm gonna share the, um, the, the PDFs at some point I have to locate it on how the first thing I did was being present. So coming from Africa, the word present, I didn't know English because English is my second language. So the word present, I started looking at it differently. I'm like, I first heard this word in class because a long time ago, they did a roll call where they called your name and you would say present. And so the word present to me, I associated with class. So as I was learning English, I started putting two and two together. I'm like, okay, it's present. And then in Africa, we have Christmas Day and Boxing Day. So Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. They do, they call it, they give presents on Boxing Day. That's what they used to do when I was there. And so I began to think, I said, this same word presents, I heard it in school. And the same word presents, I'm hearing it again. So there's a deeper meaning to everything in life. So I realized something that when I say present in class, that means I'm here. When somebody is absent, they marked absent. And so I began like wondering, so the difference between the person who's present and absent is that the person who's present is gonna hear and do. So on, for my own applications as a young girl, I made sure every time my teachers were talking, I heard everything word to word. My brain absorbed it so much that one, when I was at the University of Zimbabwe and they asked an open-ended questions, I reproduced the notes from my teacher. My professor would call me and say, did you have your notes when you took this exam? I didn't. 
It was because I realized when I'm present, I'm here. So when we are present, we have to recruit all the power. The power of survival has to be recruited. And if we live long enough, we all gonna have to do this. That's why resilience is the term which people are using a lot. So the power of survival is in that I'm here. I'm present and everything I have, I'm using for this moment. That's why you see people are talking about mindfulness. That's what mindfulness is all about. When I'm here and I'm breathing, breathing is what matters to me. When I'm here and I'm drinking water, drinking water is what matters to me. And when I'm here, I'm eating my meal, eating my meal is what matters to me. So you see, it's a process which takes time. And that's why I'm inviting you to keep to hang around because you will realize that this shift of thinking is within us. It's within us because I know it is within us. That's why this neuroplasticity, this, this neuroscience, which they are pushing on us, it was there in the Garden of Eden. So my dear sister, I'm with you. Stay connected. If you have any questions for me, ask me. If I don't know, I'll point you somewhere where you can get the help. But one thing I'm going to tell you this, don't give up, you're still here. You're there for your children. Those children will grow. Some of them will become professors, doctors, they will. That's one thing which challenges parents. As a single mother raising four children, and Viv, Vivian can attest to this because she saw my children over 18, 16 years ago, I know something that these children will one day grow. So I never saw it as a burden. I saw it as an opportunity to educate them on what it looks like when they are grown. <laughs> Whether that was due to budget, I did not spoil them. Christmas was not celebrated here. What was celebrated in our home is that between Christmas and New Year, things go on sale. That's the message I taught my kids. You're not getting no presents at Christmas because there's no Santa. He doesn't exist. My home never existed. But we know after Christmas, things go on 70%. I could afford to, to give them what they wanted. But I realized what they needed from me is to understand budgeting. And so my sister, you find things to do with your children to build them with where you are. And that is your, your, that will be your goal, your desire, your passion. And I know that we spend almost two hours in this room now and people are excited. I'm excited too. One thing I want to tell, share, share with you is this, that sometimes we overwhelm ourselves. We want to get everything done right away. It takes time and it's okay for you to live here today and say, I'm just gonna do that one thing and do it as much as you can and get feedback from someone else. Exchange numbers with the people are here. Say, hey, I wanna share with you because we, you, you heard this same thing uh, over and over together. So how can you work together? Somebody in Jamaica, you can get together with someone in Jamaica or UK, whichever way you see fit. But I'm telling you, no man is an island. We as a people, we're gonna have to learn to support each other. And that's the message which is coming very vividly with what's going on in the world. So you are not alone. You can show up here every Sunday and ask questions. You can show up here in every Sunday and contribute and share your experiences because it's not about me. I could talk all day, but if what I'm saying is not helping you, why am I talking? And I'm not the kind of person who wants to talk in here. If I can't make a difference, I'm quiet. I'm not even, that's just me. So to me, this is who we are. I am going to call this group, which I'm going to create, Rise. Rise, overcoming the obstacles, getting unstuck. Because when you're rising, you have to have reason. You have to have resilience. You have to have results. And so one of the results you got today 
is you showed up, you attended, you listened to something. It doesn't matter if you would put it in practice today or not, because there's five stages of change, five stages of change. The first stage is pre-contemplative, where I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking it's not for me, it's not for me, it's not for me. And to put you in a spot, you ask the question. You could be one of those people, um, Jesse, who's saying, it can be done, it can be done, it can be done, and it's okay. That's the first stage of change based on the trans theoretical model. The next stage is where you are contemplating, maybe there's something in it for me. You're beginning to see some pros. You're now seeing a little bit of positivity, a little bit of hope. That's the next stage, contemplative. And it's normal to feel like that. And it's easy to go back to pre-contemplative again. But if you're moving to the next level, it's preparation. So for most of you who are here, you are in the preparation stage because you showed up and you stayed, for some of you for two hours. So you're in the preparation stage, which means that you've seen the need to click the link and stay here because you see something in it for you. So that preparation stage is where you take notes, is where you listen, is where you attend, is when you start you know, asking questions like you just did, Jesse. So you're in the preparation stage. So when you're in the preparation stage, in order to experience change, you need to move to the next level, which is the action. So knowing that change is a process, that's why I gave you the tools. The action phase for you today is to do the wheel of life, see where you are with your segments, complete the dream big form, see where you want to go in the next five years, break it down, and see what's missing in between. Then you come to me and say, this is what I think is missing. How best can I do this? And that's what change looks like. And so once you're in that action phase, it takes six months, six solid months in the action phase for it to become second nature, for it to become solid. And that's why we are forming this community. We are like, we're gonna nurture you. We're gonna support you for those six months while you're in action. And once you're in action for six months, it takes another six months in the last stage of change, which is maintenance, maintenance. So a person like me have gone through change all my life. And I know I have my support team in my life. I talk to less than 10 people on a regular basis, less than 10, and I'm in it. If I need something with technology, hey, Mofu, how can we do this? If it's on a personal journey, hey, Vivian, this is what's going on. So just pray for me. So I don't really have like a, a million people I deal with. I don't go to a million places because I realize that to maintain the path I'm at, I have to learn, of course, but I got to know what I can handle. So not everything we can change. But if we find that one thing we can change, we can. And sometimes that's listening, just listening to someone. Listening, I heard you, Jesse, and I realize you're in a situation. The situation is such that you love your children and you're doing the best you can. So at some point, I'm going to do a session in this space on active listening, because what happens is this. When we have other people in our spaces or we are in their spaces, we are not hearing them. We think we are hearing them, but we are not understanding them. And so relationships are tricky in that this person thinks what they are saying is right, and this person thinks what they want is right, and then you have conflict. So Jesse, one thing which can help is learning how to resolve conflict. Conflict can be internal. You can have your own conversation with you, where you're struggling inside, and it's normal. Or it can be with other people we are trying to resolve conflict with other people, and it's normal. One thing modern day has taught us is to avoid dealing with problems. And so those are some of the tools which I hope we'll share in the discussions. When somebody posts something, I'll put a resource in there you can go use, and I'll give you some guidance. Um, so we are here now. We are journeying together. There's no one person who's better than another. 
It's a misconception and a misunderstanding. Each and every one of us are unique. We have something to offer somebody. Even in this space, when you come, you ask, please ask, don't even shrink. I know we lost joy and I'm not sure she lost connection. So even what I, I know some people want everybody to be fluent, appreciate that somebody who has an accent is saying something to you and realize that that person is trying. So I want you to take a moment and give yourself a hand because you've done well, you did great. Give yourself a hand because you've done well. I'm excited. So I don't think there are any more questions here. I think it's time to close camp. It's been time well spent. I'm committed to do my best. How much are you committed to get unstuck? Talk to me. How many people here are saying, I'm committed to get unstuck? You can type in the chat box or you can raise your hand, whatever is easy. Anybody here committed to get unstuck? I am. Thank you. So between one and 10, how confident are you that you're going to get unstuck? Give the number in the chat box. Type a number in there between one and 10. How confident are you that you're going to get unstuck? Everybody, I need the 30, the 29 of you, put a number in the chat box because I'm going to physically go in there and read every single chat. Give me a number on how confident you are between one and 10. So that's unconfident. So you are here and you're saying, here is my confident number today. That's my confidence number, my, my self-efficacy number. And I'm seeing the nines and the tens and I'm excited because this is what we are talking about. At some point, I'm gonna start training people to help others, train the trainer, uh, to, for you guys to become the, the people who help others because that's what we are all gonna do, do together. So you know your confidence. Now, I want you to go in there and type a number. Mofu, can you put importance in the chat box first so we can separate these numbers? Okay, so yeah, importance. So now you're thinking, how important is it on the same scale of zero to 10? What's the level of importance for me to get unstuck? How important is this to me? Type your number in the chat box. Because things have to be meaningful to you. Between one and 10, this is my importance number. You put your number there. You put your number there. So when you tell yourself that my importance is between seven and 10, this is important to me. It's a 10. If it's a zero, it's okay. If it's a 10, it's okay. You then say, what do I need? To get started and I gave you the two. I gave you the, the wheel of life. I'll give you the smart goal. I'll give you any the dream big. I give you the resources. And then you have to ask yourself, is this something I can do on my own or is this something I need help? Because if that's something you can do on your own, that's easy. You just have to get the resource and, and keep moving like that. Something you need help, then you gotta have to identify a professional who can help you. I'm willing to do a group session for six weeks for those who say, I want to be in a group. Um, so for those of you who are here today who said, I want to be in a six week training session to get unstuck, I will put together a group where I can meet with you once a week for six weeks for our sessions. So we can move together because people, time is moving and we are here now. So for those of you who really would say I would want to journey and I one day I want to become an expert to help other people, you can email or you can communicate with me. There are no any other questions at this point, Ohati. V, you have your hand up. Okay, I wanted just to say I am willing to be one of the first to be a part 
participant of the group um, I have found what you are giving our tools to help me to pull my bridging forward because I am from a church that we don't have congregational wellness. And I think so much is about we need more practical Christianity in our churches. And so what you're giving us is a tool for us to equip us to use medical missionary because the mind needs to be healed before the body can be healed. Thank you. Oh, most welcome. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for your response, support, and your willingness to show up. Um, Thank you, Mary, and thank you, everybody who's typed in. I think we've addressed all the, the questions here. Um, next week, we are meeting and we are going to talk about fear of missing out and the joy of missing out, uh, because sometimes that can help to get unstuck. And then um, thereafter, we have other speakers scheduled in this room, and I'll be doing a training session at a different time. So friends of mine, I have a question before you go. Yes. And yes. my question is, you know how we're not supposed to scorn each other and we should esteem others better than ourselves and so on and so forth. So after becoming unstuck, what do I do to keep moving? And to, you know, sometimes you can go with people, all right, in our churches and so on and so forth maybe the workplace it's so toxic how do i navigate you yes i want to focus on i'm drinking water and i'm doing this but sometimes the mouth can open so much that they pick at your brain like a vulture like a woodpecker what do i do it's an opportunity it's an opportunity because when you are purposed to to move in a certain direction there's someone somewhere who's also desiring to do the same thing. You'll be surprised. If you go to those people and you have a conversation with them and say, hey, I was in a group this week. You can just say it the way you feel. I say it all the time. I'm like, listen, I went to a place which blew my mind. I didn't even know these things exist. I talk like that all the time and people are like, what? So you can just say, you know, I went to a session and I realized that people are stuck. I didn't I thought I was the only one, but a lot of people are really stuck. Just start a conversation with them like that. No judgment. Share with them. And okay. then if they pick on you, somebody will say, you know, what are you talking about? It takes people seeing an advertisement seven times before they move. Commercial. So imagine you're not even, you know, you don't have a video. It's just you talking. It's just plain old V. So you sometimes you have to say it and say it different ways for people to get it because their brain doesn't know it. You see, that's why I'm having these sessions because generation curses and generation traumas have been perpetuated by people who don't know how to change. And because they don't know how to change, they are dragging everybody else down with them and people are normalizing it. So we are now here saying it can be done. So we you know it can be done. So perhaps what you need to do before you come to the training, find a friend who comes to the training with you. And the Bible talks about two by twos for a reason. You got to have someone you minister with, somebody you journey with. So I encourage all those who want to be trained, find your friend, someone. Whether they are in a distance, they're in the same space. Because when two people, and every time I train coaches, I train two coaches. I don't like to train one coach in an organization. I do two. Because of the very reason you're talking about. Because you can be at this level when everybody else is at the lower level. I've seen it. I've been church all my years. So I know what you're talking about. Sometimes ignorance is pushed forward because people don't know. It's not their fault. And we are not here to say anybody's doing wrong. We are here to say we are creating a culture, a culture of change, which takes that leap of faith. And that's why the title was a leap of faith. See, I just took a leap of faith today. I did a two-hour talk without a PowerPoint, without a slide. I have it. I just realized that sometimes we limit ourselves. We think that, and I've seen this. You show up at an event. The first thing you hear, oh, I'm sorry, so-and-so is late, or so-and-so isn't here. And I'm like, what's wrong with these people? They give credit for those who are not there, who are absent. Remember I told you about being present? It's no longer about what somebody thinks or says. It's about 
the journey I'm on, which is going to impact my life and impact many other lives of people who are stuck. That's how I look at it. That's, it's just how I look at it. And so sometimes we think when people don't show up, it's our problem. When people don't change, it's our problem. No, it's not. You never should own someone else's problem. Your responsibility V, is to move. Those will be your future clients. Trust me, it's a matter of time before they come, become your customers. And I've done that and I know it works. So you just push, pray until something happens and do. So you bring a very valid point and I like the fact that you asked it. It's not, um, it's not by accident that you're asking me that. Um, I also wanna say this, bring your questions in, email them to me, I'll answer them. I'll give you the answers as much as I can. This is my ministry. I retired from being a professor because I wanna help God's people where they are. Because I realized that I did it with my students. My students came 22 with high blood pressure, 300 pounds. In six months, the blood pressure was back to no more, seven pounds gone. Because I did not teach to get paid. I taught to make a difference. So what I'm talking about here works. I transformed life. My students left there understanding how to run a business because I was not just about teaching you anatomy and physiology or you know, pathology or pharmacology. I was there to teach the process, the process of transformation. And that's what I'm here for. So your question is valid. So we will talk, we'll do a session on how to deal with people who are giving you problems or difficult people. I'll do a session and I can tell you that there's no one who's incapable of changing. They are still there. So perhaps you just need to do a devotion where you send every day. Perhaps you just need to, to write a little note and give them, I've done it. I'm an African-American woman who resides in the US in the state of Florida. And I've done it. And I, I don't know anyone from my country here, like close to me. I don't. The closest person I have is Viv, who's from Barbados. So I know, and she's from Barbados. She, she will tell you the same thing. She came to this country as a young lady. So we all have this ability in us to survive. We need to tap into it. And that's exactly what we're doing. I forgot earlier on to acknowledge Mr. D. D. Nichi Munya all the way from Zambia. I need to collect, connect you with Mofu. Thank you. He is our audiovisual volunteer for psych therapy who puts these videos on YouTube. Thank you so much for the work you do. I just recognize you are in the room. Doc, I just yeah. want to um, say I brought along somebody today. Dr. Novi Younger Coleman is there, but she only put her name as Novi Younger Coleman. Um, there you go. She's, yes. she's one of our great at the University of the West Indies, senior lecturer. And so she has been my support. And another question I have for you is, I am like a scaredy cat. And the reason why I am going to be practical and candid, excuse me for being blunt, at church, I tend to look at character and temperament. There are some temperaments when I see them, I run. And if I try to talk to them and I realize that the hostility is coming out and the hostility, I'm, I walk. So how do you deal with that? And how, what do I do not to feel scared of my own bridging? Like, Jesus, I can't manage it at all to get in all the... They never see anything the way you're trying to share it with them. And they're always teaching you when they're really not able to teach. So one of the things you can do, V, I don't want to take you through the hoops and ask you what is it that you think you can do coming from the session, because that's what I would normally do. One thing I can say is this. What do you think you should do coming from a session like this? What's that one thing you think you could do? <laughs> well, I think my weakness is make friends. I think start making friends. There I you go. I begin in the church, start making friends. There you go. And, and, and I'm you just came up with a face that smiles like you. Yes. <laughs> so the way like to make you. friends, you smile more. Yes. You can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. 
So a lot of people over the years, and I've seen this, I've seen it, they frown a lot and their face is now full of lines by the time they are 40 because they are always constantly making these faces. So after you've prayed, thank you, she said pray, you smile because you've already prayed. You show up, you look them in the face and say, it's good to see you with a smile. Thank you. And if somebody asks you why you smile, I smile because I'm happy to be here and seeing you makes a difference. Thank you. You've been in my life for a long time. Acknowledge people. Then they think, have I already been kind to her? Let people think. That's a gift we have. When, it, when you say something which is not, which is out of, you know, the norm, people will question, oh, but maybe I should say hello to her next time. So, you, you know, I understand what you're saying. It's painful. It's an opportunity. So one thing you can do, V, is the opportunity. This is where things are now. This is how you feel about it. And this is where you're going. This is where you want, how you want to, this is how you want to feel about it. And what's in between is exactly what you do. That's the first thing I gave you. Remember the two with two columns? Yeah. Um, so yeah, you yeah, so yeah, you're really living here with those those skills. And uh, thank you for bringing your friend here. We'll allow her to speak if she's still in the room. Yeah. Dr. Manovi Young Coleman, we acknowledge your presence. Thank you for joining us. Do you have a few words to share? She might be away from her mic. But anyhow, so, so with what you're saying, this has been my observation. Knowledge is plenty. And you, some of you have heard me say this already. There's so much knowledge out there, but the ability to take knowledge and translate it into practice is what is missing. So the, all those people you're talking about, they know that love one another. If you ask them the scripture, they can tell you all of it if you meet them at church. If you ask them why they are going to church, they'll tell you all what they say is the skills to take that knowledge and put it into practice, which is missing. It's like that with everything in the world. Because if you Google today, Anything about love or anything, you get billions of hits. You get billions. There's billions of websites talking about the same thing you're looking for. But people are struggling to take that knowledge and practice it. And that's where I come in. I give people the tools to take knowledge and practice it. That's all I do. That's what I do every day. Because people know. None of, none of my the people who come to me would tell me that they don't know what healthy eating is. Instead, some of them know more about healthy eating than I'll ever know. They can tell me about this app, that app, that app. What I see is the gap is to take that knowledge and apply it. And it's called skill. So for a person who's not treating you right, one of the skills you have is to speak and smile. So V, if you've never smiled before at a problem, do that. You'll be surprised. What happens after that? Because people might want to join your party or ask you what you're drinking or what you're taking. <laughs> you are just, you're just being yourself. I've experienced it myself and I, I don't hang out where I don't, I'm not wanted for sure. But I, I also, it doesn't bother me because it's not in my face. But given a situation where you are showing up, you have to be there, you make it work. You smile, Doctor. you share. Yes. I noticed Dr. Coleman typed something in the chat. She's listening from her kitchen. Sorry for her silence. There's just one thing more that, that I'd like to highlight, and this is it. I, at my church, I am not somebody who like to be seen. And from time to time, people would say, oh, you dress well, and you dress well, and you dress well. But I'm also, I like to sit at the back. So it's like when I go around people, they tend to be telling me about clothes and something like that, when in truth and in fact, I don't want to talk about that or talk about fashion or anything like that. So I tend to draw in a corner and stay by myself and observe and, and look and I try to reach people at one-to-one. -one. But I realize that 
one person told me that, oh, you know, I wanted to be with somebody around somebody like you, you're full of class and um, I don't have it. And so I want to get it. Those okay. who I, I think may need something like that, they tend to content rather than say, hey, how are you or what to do or something. And I'm not somebody who actually have the time or make the time all the time, all the while to be yapping, yapping, yapping. Yes. So one thing I can say, uh, Venice, is this. You said two things which um, resonate with me. I'm going to just wind up here because um, some of the the moderators have things to do and places to go because they are in a different time zone. It's almost 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. where they are in Africa. I want to see this. You say two things there. You tend to sit in the back. One thing about change, sometimes you have to do the opposite. The opposite of what you're used to doing. Sometimes that's all you have to do. You gotta move from the back to the front. Because <laughs> you see, when you are stuck, obviously you are in a certain corner. You're trying to go somewhere. And if somebody say you look good in your, dress, your clothes, that's a compliment. Maybe you do, you're a leader. So some people are leaders if they don't know. So we'll do a leadership session and we'll also do a, a confidence building session at some point. Um, so, I ha we have one hand, we'll take that last hand from Empress and then we'll ask a volunteer to pray for us and we'll close. It's been two hours and two and a half hours. Yes. Thank you so Go much, ahead. Dr. Stella. Thank you so much for your generosity. You've become so generous with your time and you've become patient and we have also patiently waited to hear. Now I have, I have some people, like two people in my life, my closest uh, relatives and friends. Uh, when I look back like in the last five, 10 years ago, they are still the same. One is in the US and um, he doesn't, he doesn't like studying, doesn't like going to, to school, work, and need much <laughs> thinking and dealing with many people. For example, like driving. He just wants to do things like that. And I've just tried to talk to him. I've, tr I've tried to ask him to do anything as easy. As first it was like, oh, it's very expensive to go to college or to do this and this. He started doing theology, but halfway through he, he just stopped. And the way I've been seeing him doing things, he's been deteriorating because before he got married, he used to preach. He used to go to church and then he got married. And then with the time, especially this time of COVID, people were not going to church, they stopped going to church. And now okay, so he listen, is not going to church okay, so. right now. And to make things worse, he's even started working on Sabbath. And that's somebody who was in a, who was training. I bet you stab it on, don't take it for, oh. So, so, who is this, this stab is over here? How do I go about this? really to help make even a slight change, a positive change. Because for him, he's, he's like, okay, no, he's having excuses. But he doesn't really want any changes, especially positive changes. And maybe he doesn't even realize he's deteriorating in, in doing things. So how do I go about that? Sometimes I feel like I'm tired of talking to this <laughs> for many, yeah. many years. and. Sometimes he doesn't even want to talk to me because especially when I start anything asking, okay, how are you doing this? Have you started going to church or something? He will hang up. He doesn't want me to introduce anything new. 
Yeah, I understand. So with something like that, really, these two things, you either yeah. get training and you get the skills to be an expert to help people change or yeah. you accept, you accept where they are. So it sounds to me like you're really passionate about helping your loved ones. <laughs> so I will be sharing in the, in, the, in the trainings on how to engage in a conversation and really make a decision because it's all about making decisions sometimes. And we don't give up on our loved ones, but at some point we have to, to know we've tried all we can. And so, yeah, it's painful because every single one of us have, we can relate. We have people like that in our family. So one of the things you could do, I mean, we talked about the wheel of life here. So you could say, hey, I learned something. Uh, you know, I want to share with you. What do you think about this? The, or I rated myself on this, on this wheel and this is what I got. Do you, would you like to do it together? Something like that. If that doesn't work, then maybe you really need to become an expert and really be able to dig deep. And so with, with people do what they like, what they do because of the way they feel. Believe it or not, people buy things because they feel a certain way. It's all about emotions. So up until you begin to understand how that person is feeling, it's hard for you to, to help them move to the next level. So you have to have the skills to really be able to, to listen and understand where they're coming from. Some people give up. I have someone who called me uh, three or four weeks ago, reached out to me on Facebook. And this, this young man said, hey, I've been watching your Facebook post. I'm diabetic been watching you for years talk about diabetes. Can you help me? And I say, sure. I'll set up a free consultation with you for an hour. And I did. And this is what, why I'm sharing this. The person went on to say, I was diagnosed with diabetes um, about six years ago. But I got COVID and my diabetes situation got worse. And at that point, I gave up. I'm telling you, I gave up. And I said, there's nothing you can do. But for some reason, God allowed me to see your, your post on Facebook to do with diabetes. And then I said, I need to contact her. And he, that person inboxed me on Facebook on Messenger. And I responded to them. She said, oh, I was really impressed you responded. She, re she got an automatic response. She said, I was impressed. I got a response right away. And I knew this was God. But to be honest, it was an automated response she got to that particular point. But I'm saying this to say, sometimes people give up. And when people have given up, our part is to listen to them. Sometimes you might have to listen to a person talk to you for a whole hour and hear them before you even tell them what to do. Most people are tired of being told what to do. But when they get to a point where they need the help, it helps them to have heard you talk to them about what might help. That's what I'm going to say to you. It's not his choice. Maybe he's given up. Here in the U.S., people can be veterans and they get benefits. So some people don't see the need to work. And people can get food stamps, so they don't see the need to work. And some people have family members. So there are many reasons. So in our next session, come back next week. We're going to talk about how you can move from that fear of missing out to the joy of missing out. Because with what you're saying, Sometimes we are driven also, we want to be there to help someone and we are so fixated on trying to help them that it occupies us. Whereas we should know the cutoff on when we've done what we can, we let go. So letting go is a skill, which sometimes we need to do that. So I hope I answered your question. Um, there's 27 people in here and, oh, hi, Wayne. I didn't see Wayne join all the way from Barbados. Thank you. Um, and I know you all are at a place where you're moving. So close your eyes. Start to see where you are going to be a week from now. You'll be in this room sharing your success story on how you overcame. 30 days from now, you'll be meeting those goals which you have set. 60 days from now, you'll be in motion and moving side by side with whoever is you're working with. Six months from now, you have gotten results. So you have to see yourself there. You literally have to get a book and write your vision statement, your journey statement, 
there's a place in the process to do this. We are not meant to be stagnant. Even those who study our bodies can tell you that things inside the human body is always in motion. If you know of Einstein, he said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting to get results. So perhaps you've been doing something over and over again and you are here, you're saying it's time. Remember, the laws of physics, even the laws of God, have told us that energy is inside us. The same energy of which is found in the universe, be it mechanical, potential energy, kinetic energy, electrical energy, electromagnetic energy, and light. It's present in our bodies in the combination as well. So when you become a person in a motion, motion, those energies become balanced. You'll be surprised. You can go places from where you are now to where you ought to go. Here we are. We've taken this leap of faith to embrace change in order for us to overcome. And I can tell you that this is a great starting point. Just think about what we've talked about and that you are at a place where you're going to take that next step and never look back. I know that as we journey on, we are going to hear and see great results in this very room. May somebody pray for us, please. Thank you. Volunteer to pray. Hi, loving Father, we thank you so much for allowing us to be able to gain just a little bit of knowledge to move us closer to being unstuck. Lord, we know that you want us to prosper and be in good health. And good health means our mental health as well. And so, God, we just thank you for this opportunity. We ask and implore your Holy Spirit to continue to give us the knowledge, to give us the ability to move forward and not stay stuck. We thank you for all of the participants God, be with them. When this Zoom closed, may they feel your presence. Lord, we know that you are the ultimate healer. We thank you for our speaker. We thank you for the host. And we thank you for all of those that contributed to the chat, Lord God. Bless them. Keep them. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will never leave from us. Keep us, God, because we cannot keep ourselves. And until we meet again on this Zoom platform next Sunday at 2.30 Eastern time, may we remain encouraged in faith, lifting your name high and holy. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Nice to see you, Dr. Stella. I Good guess to see you, too. You can get the recording. Amen. Thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Veronica. She's such a coordinator. She coordinates a lot and shares a lot. We appreciate all your hard work. Thank you to all our team and our volunteers and our guests. Please see you next week. Take care. Bye. God bless. Thank God you. Bless. Bye Thank bye. Bye-bye.